But this Singapore Sustainability Symposium is not the place where many consume the wisdom of a few. It is the place where the knowledge of all of you develops solutions for all. So it is, in this way, very interactive. And it must be, because sustainability is not about what others must do. It is actually about what we can do for the survival and dignity of all of us. While Singapore has prided itself on careful planning and judicious land use so far, it is perhaps time to reframe the problem statement to focus on how we can shift gears to continue our sustainability journey. So we want to look at how we can create a conducive environment for experimentation. And secondly, how we can bring together many different partners. And thirdly, how we can put in place the necessary frameworks and resources to guide and scale up these successful urban solutions. Cities are complex entities. In order for urban solutions to be effective, we will need to go beyond the boundary of our respective field to develop multidisciplinary solutions, whether as a policymaker, an economist, a lawyer or a scientist. We focus on regional frameworks and emphasize the need to work together because when it comes to sustainable development and sustainable security, it's no longer possible to go it alone. First is that infrastructure must be designed for the people it serves. And the lesson was, if you treat the community intentionally as one of your key stakeholders, you will get better results uh, in your planning work. Most of the planning in cities are in a siloed manner. People don't talk with each other. We are talking about, minister talked about multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary concept, but that's not prevailing. We work in silos. If we continue go in the same planning, it will definitely, certainly, you know, it will be increasing cities' vulnerability. Uh, I think there are a few ways to look at. First, communication, as you point out, is key. You need to have a period of time whereby you plant the idea, explain the consequences and the mitigating measures to the people involved. Number two is really technology and innovation. What can you do to this facility so that it will have minimal negative impact on the society? Third way is really to have very high enforcement standards. So enforcement and regulatory uh, authorities will have a big role to play in that. There do need to be concerted efforts on the part of both businesses and governments because governments have the capacity to manage those externalities such that the people making the products get some benefit. We all as citizens can play a role in demanding products that are far more sustainable. And so as I said, in terms of sustainability, our discussion should be very much about materials, energy, as well as the safety of products. As citizens, we are basically, whether we think of it or not, we are data generators at this stage. Uh, and this can be very powerful in terms of engagement. But what we need is the data behind those reports, the data behind the statistical yearbook. Because once you release those data to the public, they will generate something that you never have thought about before. And that's where innovation comes in. We have also seen that there is also an emerging of this uh, green collar workforce. And today, uh, we have trained in Singapore more than 15,000 uh, green professionals at all levels. The paradigm that we need to shift, which is that all this regulation is just adding to the cost of compliance. They don't, I think when you talk about civic engagement, that's the disconnect. Because a lot of people don't see rules as something that produces benefits. They see rules as something that is a compliance cost. Those types of you know, indicator-based or SDG-based interactive exercises could really you know, make you pause and think and reflect on you know, the diversity of goals and how they connect and this brings people together also. Bottom up, top down, I don't know. But when there's a crisis, <laughs> the two come together. You learn when you start to build uh, more sustainable that class is great but it has to be done right. That's the first thing. And the second thing, steel is actually also good. And why is steel and glass good? Because they are 100% recyclable.
So it is really quite important for city leaders in particular and also the community to decide which way would give you the best outcome in civic engagement. Different city, different community would have probably different solution. But I think this whole world is brought up in, in my first slide highlighted a consumption, a linear way, unless we educate a whole next generation. If not, if it's merely asking just the businesses to say, do this alone, they may not survive. That the, the, all the politicians are bragging that they're bicy bicycling to work. They come to this meeting in a, in a bicycle. So, so these kind of changing the way, disconnecting status from, from material consumption or material wealth is perhaps one way of going. And finally, universities are indeed strong catalyzers for engagement. You cannot have sustainability if you don't have children working on sustainability when they grow up. Education is important because it has brought us where we are today. So the linkage between education and sustainability cannot be understated. Clearly young people are, are definitely going to be you know, looking at what is it in terms of legacy that we leave behind for them and if they can voice their opinions and be part of shaping the future, um, I think we will definitely be assured that we'll have a great sustainable planet.